Well, I'm on the farm today and uh, the wind is really blowing. Uh, we're into spring. Our flags are, uh, our don't tread on me flag is about to come apart. We got to replace that uh, ASAP. But uh, the wind is really whipping and uh, it typically comes east to west down this uh, valley. I've talked before, there's mountains over there and there's mountains up there and uh, it kind of forms a triangle like that uh, as you as you go through this valley and <clears throat> a lot of times a thunderstorm will stay on that side of that mountain and a lot of times it'll stay on that side of the mountain but when a thunderstorm in the summer comes up this way and it gets up against these mountains on either side we really get dumped on and uh, we've had uh, a goodly amount of rain here the last few days When it rains, this creek really rolls. And it'll do like this for a while because it takes some time uh, for the water to come out of the mountains and uh, get down into these creeks. And sometimes uh, the water is high the day after the storm, which is where we're at uh, now. And that's, a, and that's, that's because that water comes out of, the, you know, comes out of these mountains. Over in West Virginia, in the mountains of West Virginia, it's much worse. Uh, and it'll be sunny skies and there'll be some towns along creeks that are uh, being flooded from the water that's just making it into those floodplains. So what I'm doing here uh, with my boom sprayer, I've been uh, tinkering with it some. And... Uh, need to unchain it over here but I got a I got a little bit of a dilemma with this sprayer and uh, using it with my big Massey 1105 and really using it with any of the of the tractors that I got and I'm really torn on a, on a couple fronts one of them is uh, cutting these booms and uh, see if I can get this thing loose and I thought about uh, cutting these things down you see this one's lower and what happens on these fields is they roll and even with a 20 foot boom with my other sprayer sometimes they can get into the the ends of the booms can get into the ground and uh, so I'm trying to figure out uh, if I want to cut them down and if so how much and uh, another option is just to take them off and use the booms from my other sprayer which is a, has a, a 20 foot boom but the dilemma that I'm wondering about is uh, if I leave these booms long uh, it gets uh, it gets a little uh, tedious out here uh, trying to see where you've been with the sprayer so I'm not uh, spraying too much overlapping and spraying too little uh, missing spots and uh, so in the past you've seen my TPS guidance system so if you're new to the channel I have a guidance system that we've employed on this farm for years and uh, there's some videos on that I really don't know how to do that trick where people point and there's a link so John Deere this 5055 D John Deere is the backbone of this farm and uh, the engineers at John Deere made this throttle handle I'm, 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 I just know they did because it works uh, for uh, TPS guidance system and that's what we've been using TPS guidance and what that is is I take myself a roll of toilet paper and I slide it down on that throttle handle like that and as I'm going along through the field whether I'm fertilizing or spraying I take a little wad and I drop it and then I'll see it as I 
uh, make my round for the next pass and I can judge my distance. TPS guidance system. So the question then is how do I make the TPS guidance system work with the mighty Massey Ferguson 1105? an idea. <clears throat> so I could ride along and uh, I guess toss it out the door. There's no roll down windows on these old uh, tractor cabs. <clears throat> so my thought was Maybe what I could do is grab this handle right here. Put that window open like that. Grab a little TP down here. Maybe even put it on that knob. And just drop it out the back as I go. That's definitely an option. So I could, I could use the TPS guidance system on the uh, Massey 1105. So there's other, there's other options uh, that I'm considering uh, besides uh, what I've just shown. And uh, they have to be compatible with, you know, a cab tractor. And they have to be compatible with my open station tractors too. And uh, all of them, I'm just... Uh, not just my John Deere, but the Massey Ferguson's, uh, the Farmalls. Uh, whatever I do, uh, they have to be compatible with these open station tractors. So there's a couple other options, and I apologize for the wind. There's nothing I can do about the wind or the rain on this farm. But uh, it's kind of politically incorrect these days, but... Uh, I thought about putting a foam marker on here, you know, with a drop, a dropper here and on the other end. And uh, I'm kind of intrigued by it. Uh, they're relatively cheap. And uh, I could probably build one, uh, probably design and build one myself, me being a hotshot engineer. And uh, the only question is, uh, you know, do I want to, uh, go through the hassle of building one or get something that just works right out of the box and uh, crop care has a couple of them um, that may be of interest the other uh, option is GPS and uh, you know there are light bars and then they some of them have screens where they it, it paints the uh, the screen as you go uh, there's one, I think it's called the Raven Cruiser 2, that interests me. Um, I might be wrong on this, but I think uh, it has the ability to add on where you can cut, turn these nozzles on and off, depending on, you know, how much you're overlapping. And our fields are so irregular in shape, that has some, uh, that has some appeal. But... Uh, you know it starts getting a little bit expensive and uh so i'm not sure uh what i want to do i don't think i want just a straight light bar i think if i had a, a gps i'd want a screen where it, you know it paints off you know where you've been uh, with your sprayer or for that matter your fertilizer spreader and uh so just kind of pondering my options here on the farm with regards to uh some way to uh, kind of keep track of where I've been with the sprayer and really the fertilizer spreader uh, it's using the, the 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 toilet paper TPS deal uh, we've done that for years and uh, I get along pretty good with it but uh, you know it's an open station tractor with a 20 foot boom uh, 40 foot booms I'm not sure uh, how easy that uh, I can you know that I can see and uh, the more I look at this sprayer, 
the less interested I am in cutting these booms because, uh, you know, it's nice to get on and off, off of the field. And I know we got some tight places in here, but uh, I think this would be, if I can get these booms leveled out and, uh, and make this work, this might be uh, a pretty good option. So anyway, uh, TPS, GPS, foam markers. I'm curious as to what you guys use on your farm. Uh, be interested in any recommendations uh, uh, as far as uh, GPS. Uh, what 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 unit are you using and and why? Uh, what you like about it? What you don't like about it? And uh, if anybody's out there still using a foam marker, uh, I think they're pretty economical. Uh, especially compared to a GPS unit that's loaded up with options. So uh, uh, if you got any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll kind of wind this video down. Again, I apologize for the noise. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're getting things are greening up, and uh, we're kind of plowing into hay season here. Uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be long, and that grass out there will be uh, up to your knees. So uh, I'm anxious to get this thing uh, kind of refurbed. And uh, so again, thanks for watching. Hope uh, you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button, like, comment. And we'll talk to you later.